this edition of the Director's Log, Mrs. Riddle and Mrs. Adams Riley are going to talk to you about our mindfulness program that has been integrated into our Christian education program, a little bit about the history of it and what we're doing this year. Mindfulness, when we listen to the bell, when we follow our breath, helps the upstairs part of our brain, our thinking, talk to the downstairs part of our brain, our feeling. So, for example, I have to do my homework. I don't want to do my homework. I don't want to do it. Shout. I'm not going to do it. That means I have flipped my lid. The upstairs part of my brain is no longer talking to the downstairs part of my brain. Mindfulness <coughs> helps the upstairs and the downstairs stay connected. So that even when I don't want to do my homework, I can make a choice. I can... And it feels one way and on another day we come in and hear the bell and it feels a different it felt like you're getting closer to God and Jesus and did you feel that in your mind in your heart in your body or you just had that beautiful thought beautiful thought, beautiful thought. so it's a beautiful thought. tell me about this mindfulness initiative that we've got going on in Christian Ed mm -hmm. well um, actually about I would say 20 years ago, kids were being so overdiagnosed with ADD, with attention problems, with um, not being able to focus, and I looked and I thought, I really think there's more anxiety here than there is attention. If they could learn to pay attention, then that anxiety is not going to be so prevalent in their lives. So we started like in chapel, then on into classes, into CE, as a way to calm ourselves the way to pay attention so that we can actually hear what's being said we can see what's being presented we can notice what our friends are doing um, and so once I did that I did some training with the teachers um, and then Joy was doing a lot of it in music Joy actually had her kids go on noticing walks to see what sounds they could hear what things and then um, in science they started doing a lot in science to see what they could see, what they could hear as a way to collect data. So being able to calm yourself so that you can really take time to notice is an important thing. So we began our CE classes with about five minutes of calming time, quiet time, and I would do different activities, different exercises, and um, even primers understood what was going on. They knew when the bell started and when the bell stopped and what brought us back together. Well, then we got the uh, strategic goals, and, and their Episcopal identity was being able to um, help people take care of themselves physically, spiritually, mentally, and being able to um, recreate themselves. So mindfulness just naturally fit into the CE curriculum there. And then this lovely woman came to town, <laughs> and she too had, we just spoke the same language. She had a mindfulness practice, and. And one day she came and we were talking and our, it just happened together that, you know, this is little pieces of it in class, but what if? What if they could have one whole class a month and learn to go deeper and really learn more about what they're trying to do? And so that, that's where Jesus stepped in. Yeah, so tell me what you do in class. So you're seeing the kids once a month. Yeah, so once a month they, um they wander in or they run in or they um, sl <laughs> slide in uh, and, and we, we, we sit down and we gather ourselves. Um, and it's not that they have to sit down and be still the whole time. I mean, mindfulness is about recognizing what's going on with me. So, so mindfulness is paying attention to your teacher, your parents, but it's also learning to pay attention to yourself, your thoughts, your feelings. So we come in and we sit and we gather. And we talk about, without necessarily using the word transition, but transitions really matter. So getting them in the room, um, we've been starting so far this year with, with a bell. I have a great big singing bowl. Um, and so I'll invite the bell. And they love it because Valerie's been doing it forever. 
and mine um, smaller. Well, they they, <laughs> they do tell me that that mine is a lot bigger. Um, and uh, so they they love the sound of the bell, and 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 we get so many different wonderful um, uh, thoughts about the bell afterwards. So so I'll invite the bell and. You know, some of them love it, and some of them are just counting how long it's going. Some of them are, they just know, they just close their eyes and they feel the bell. They're listening to the sound of it, they're sensing the vibration. Um, other kids are um, not as fond of it because it, it goes on too long. Um, <laughs> right. And and some of them, it's really hard to stay with the bell for that long. So so they'll say it's still going, which is hilarious, right? Because then everyone's like, "What? Well, of course it's still going. Would you be quiet? You know." And so, it, and then there are a few kids who, um, it it doesn't. They don't love the bell, and it kind of bothers their ears, and it reminds them of things that bother them, um, and so that's welcome too. So it, it's an opportunity to come in and settle. Um, so that's that's a mindfulness practice that we do. Um, you could call it um, meditation of the bell if you wanted to. And so two really important definitions. Mindfulness, paying attention on purpose with kindness. That, that's what it is. Practicing, we call it meditation or mindfulness practice. Meditation, paying attention on purpose with kindness to the breath or the bell, or this walk, or this sound. So it's just a practice to help you be mindful. Um, so we might read a book or part of a book, and then we might do another practice. Um, we might really focus in on the breath in order to, to cultivate that attention, right? So they're in class and they realize their mind has wandered. Well, they can bring it back, right? So it's both a practice of learning to be mindful learning that you can bring your attention back. But it's also a big part of it that, that Valerie touched on is a lot of these kids don't necessarily have attention deficit disorders and, and, and diagnoses. They just haven't learned how to pay attention. I remember being in the sixth grade and um, tuning out in English in, in I think we called it English class in the sixth grade I don't remember <laughs> maybe it was grammar or something I don't know and tuning back in and the lesson on commas was over and I remember thinking oh, oh my gosh I don't know what a comma is and I've completely missed it I mean I remember that in the sixth grade and every time I would write a comma from that moment forward like I'm not I don't, does it go here? I, you know, like I felt like I missed something. So it was a skill I had to learn, the skill of paying attention. So it's, it's paying attention in school, but it's paying attention to me. What's going on with me? What am I thinking? What, what's the tone of my thought right now? Mm -hmm. And then what am I feeling? You know, I might be anxious. I might be scared. I might be sad. Um, learning that I can, and the practices, the meditation practices, the mindfulness practices about paying attention, I can learn to hold it. You know, I might be really mad or I might be really excited, but it's also not the time to act on it, right? So I learned to, to hold it and I learn, okay, whew, I, can, I can breathe through this, okay? But let's say, let's say I'm in math. And um, I did listen to the lesson, right? So like there's every reason that I should know how to do this worksheet, but I, I don't know what it is. I, I can't do it for some reason, right? And so I kind of look around and I see, oh my gosh, everybody, you know, I start comparing my insides to everybody's outsides. They look like they know what they're doing. So then I start to get really nervous, right? And I'm like, and, and then we know, we know that once the, the mind kicks into that mode of, anxiety shut down. I am not going to be able to do this worksheet. I can hardly see it, even though I literally can still see it, right? Okay, so so we could do something like, you know, at their desk without anybody knowing. Okay, take a breath. I am okay. I am okay. It just starts to take the temperature down. They can feel you know, they, they don't know all this, but they can feel the cortisol in their body just, okay, I'm calming down. 
right? They, they can, we, we, we do a lot of practices with the body, right? So feeling into their body. Their body is a truth teller. Their body can always tell them what's going on in their mind, just like their mind will tell them what's going on in their body, right? So they can sort of sit up in their seat. They can feel their feet underneath them. All this is going on, right? Nobody has to know. So it's about teaching them practices that help ground them, help them to learn to be okay in here. It's one of the things I really think that's unique, like in church or chapel, is that these phrases that have been built in about quieting your feet, being still and know that I'm... Yes. And you, you see that, is that being able to quiet and settle yourself. So what is the end goal? What is the hope that you hope that when students walk out of the lower school and move into middle school, what do you guys hope this will help them do? I guess for me, I hope that, like, like we've been saying, is that they, they learn to notice, this is what's going on with me. If I'm jealous, to really figure out what that, that feels like and notice what that is, and then, okay, and work and notice it and be able to work from there. If someone's being mean, are they really being mean? The other day a little boy was said something unkind and he said, I think I was frustrated because mm-hmm. the ball was intercepted and then we were losing. I didn't mean it that way. I think I was frustrated. So just be able to notice that and the way that we treat each other with kindness, the way that we learn to not just pray with words all the time, but we learn to pray with ears, that sometimes we listen and let God speak to us through others, through uh, whatever way God would like to speak to us. But if we're talking all the time, we can't hear that. Um, to take a breath when I get really nervous and to know that I can, I can breathe through this nervousness. I don't have to let it take charge. I think the focus that they can bring to little things is just the, the things that I've seen through the years is, are just remarkable and I'm just so glad to have Gina now to have the little focus on it where they're really going to get a piece of it, not just five minutes a week, where they really can take some time to understand this is what's going on. Transitions, like you said, being able to move from lower school to middle school, from grade to grade, from teacher to teacher, just being able to, you know, okay, now I'm here and know where you are in space and time. Go ahead. Um, well, emotional intelligence is, uh-huh. is, okay, so research shows that success, a, a, a child's success, a, a, when they become an adult, um, over the years, um, what has mattered most is their emotional intelligence. That is a predictor of success, okay? So emotional intelligence is about becoming self-aware. And mindfulness helps children become self-aware. And it's so important not to confuse mindfulness with being full of yourself or <laughs> thinking it's all about you. But if we don't have awareness of ourself, yeah. we cannot be aware of other people. So we become more intelligent about our emotions, other people's emotions. We become more intelligent, intelligent about what's going on inside of us so we can become more intelligent and more aware of what's going on outside of us. I really want this um, to help reduce stress. Uh, Parents are telling me how stressed out their kids seem and and how stressed out their kids feel. There's no downtime. That's right. You're an automatic pilot. And so so the practices, when when we come together, we're doing um, three things all at once, okay? One is giving them an experience of being mindful. Like right now, when we, when they come in and we say, we're, we're just doing it. And we're talking about it some, but we're doing it. Right. That, that impacts them right here, right now, and then off an hour later on the playground when something goes down that they're not cool with, right? Okay, so right here, right now. But they're learning about it too. They're getting some words. What is mindfulness? What is meditation? Just normalizing that those words for them. It doesn't have to be something that seems foreign. It you know, really teaching them about their attention, about awareness. And then the other thing it's doing 
is it is training their brain, which is what directs their thoughts and their mind, right? So that when they get up um, and they're um, off and they feel the stress level rising, um, their brain is going to kick in. And that's when the mindfulness bubbles up. So less stress, less feelings of stress, that's a result of practicing mindfulness, of doing meditation practices. Also, the bubbling up of, okay, I'm feeling the heat in my body right now. I'm feeling angry. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna hold this, I'm gonna take a breath. You know, Miss Valerie and Miss Adams Riley say, I can do this. They believe in me. Mr. Johnstone, he believes that, you know, so like, right. okay, I can do this. Uh, and the fourth thing I would say is training your brain for that sustained attention. Because if they can learn to train that muscle to get a little stronger in just counting breaths, just breathing, just noticing your breath, then you can sustain it in academics, you can sustain mm -hmm. it in sports, you can sustain it in music wherever you want to. So that piece of it, just as a side, I think happens. 